Okay, so in this question, we're given a contingency table. And we can have four possible types of questions in this. The first question they can ask us is, what is the probability of just one letter or one option? In this case, we're just trying to find the probability of A3. They could also give it to you like this, which basically means the same thing as this over here. What is the probability of A3? So anytime they're asking us to find a single thing, all we do is we look for A3. We know A3 is over there. We always look at the total and we divide by the absolute total. The solution to the A part would be 15, which is the total of A3, divided by 47. In the B part of the question, they're asking us to find the probability of two things that both occur, because they use the word and. Again, they could write it like this as well, which means the exact same thing, the probability of A2 and B3. So when we're doing an and question, we go to A2, we go to B3, we see where they both intersect. They both intersect over here at 1. Again, we divide by the total. So for this B part here, the probability of A2 and B3 would be 1 over the absolute total. In the C part of the question, they're asking us the probability of A2 or B1, again they could write it like this as well. Whenever doing, we're doing the probability with R in a contingency table, we gotta remember that these are non mutually exclusive events. We have to make sure to use our non mutually exclusive R formula. The probability of A2, again, if you look at our contingency table, is just 4 divided by 47. Probability of B1, B1's over there, total of B1 is 15, so that's 15 divided by 47. Probability of A2 and B1. You know A2 is here, B1 is over there. They both intersect at the point 2. And then we calculate it doing that. And the last possible question is they can ask us the probability of something given something else happens or has already happened. Okay, another way to represent that probability of A4 given that B1 has already happened. So I should change that to a happened. Okay, so again, if we're solving a question like this, not too difficult. The first thing you're going to do is if this question says given B1 happened or the second term here is B1, what you're going to do is you're going to cover basically the rest of the table so that only B1 shows. So in this case, I'm going to make the entire rest of that table disappear because the only thing that we care about now is our B1. This means that B1 has happened. We are trying to find the probability I don't even need that. I can just cover it with this. We are trying to find the probability of A4 
given that b1 has happened, we know that this is given that b1 has happened, probability of a4 is just 6, total probability is now 15. Okay, so in given questions, most likely your total will be much smaller than the rest of them.